my name is Vicente Diaz, and I work at S21 Sec. It's a Spanish security firm. And I'll give you an inside overview of uh, the SUS Trojan malware. But not only about this Trojan, but also about the everything that is involved in this fraud. Not only about this uh, Trojan itself, but also about all the malware, the banking malware that is going around. And I hope that this presentation will give us some clues of how to fight it effectively. This has been a hot topic during this year. This year has been this year of malware. Uh, there have been other presentations about SEUS itself. And I hope that this one would have a different approach talking about the underground and the people who is behind. So we can have a more clear idea of everything put together. So as I told you, this presentation is not only about the, the technical analysis of malware itself, but about people, people who is behind. And in this case, it's people who is making out of money, out of money with banking trojans, with malware, and with all uh, industry who is behind. Because I think that the most uh, appropriate approach is to treat it like an industry, because this is how it is working. So in this case, this is an example of uh, a forum uh, called uh, Ghost Market. It was closed last month. And this is the kind of people who is making money trading with cards, uh, buying small things like plasma TVs, reselling them, or buying, uh, for instance, tickets for New York Knicks, then reselling them on eBay, things like that. But you see it's young people that are only, only care of making money easily, and they always are comfortable with this kind of forums because as there are so many people doing this at this moment, it's like they have the sense of immunity that they are not going to be caught anyway. But in this particular case, we can see this is the last message from the, from the admin of the forum. He's saying things like, uh, the last host for Ghost Market was great, was great by a server team from London and he tells me they most likely have access to the, the database and have dumped it. I'm probably the most wanted cyber criminal right now. Probably this is not true because this guy is, there are a lot of forms like this one. So he's pretending to be more important than he is actually. But you can see there's a lot of people who was involved in this forum and they were given, for instance, for when they were ordering something from uh, like a TV or a computer, instead of using a drop site, they were shipping it to his own house because they had the sense of immunity. In case that they are investigated now, they can be easily caught. But for instance, in this case, this is a small forum. I'm sure all of you remember last year, that market was a very big and important one, very difficult to get into and one of the administrators, administrators of this forum was from the FBI. So in this case, one of the admins was doing like uh, $90,000 uh, running this forum. This is like nothing in comparison with one of the guys from Nigeria who was involved and is going to be charged for $40 million stolen through this forum. So these people is only doing small things but there is a lot of people. So you can have a picture of how this money is moving around. This, this news is from yesterday when two people were arrested in the UK. I don't know if they were related to this forum or not, but probably because most of them were in the UK. Bonnie and Clyde of Malware, of course they are not. But maybe you know, people are afraid of being caught and in this case, if they don't have the sense of being immune to everything, they will stop doing things like that. I don't know, it's more a social thing of having this sense of immunity than any other question. In this case as well, uh, the, mar the forum uh, was hacked, was on it by someone called Affix. I have no idea who this guy was, but it was in last July. 
maybe it's related to security forces, I have no idea. But what's the problem with all these kind of forums? It's like a whack-a-mole game, you know it. Every time that you close it, it will be reopened again in other place, and it's very difficult. This is the, the real problem, that there is a lot of people that is not having the sense of responsibility or the sense that they are stealing and they are doing bad things. They are feeling like immune, so they just move around and do it again, and that's the real problem. So how much money is being moved in, in this market of this industry of malware? Well, I make a metamorph, and if the crime was an industry according to the expectations of the money who is being moved into this industry, it will be the 15th one in the Fortune 500. It's above Microsoft, doing much better, but still a long way above from Walmart. However, uh, thanks to Matt in yesterday's keynote, I have new figures between 10 and 80 billion. I don't know, it's difficult to say, but you can have more or less an idea. Someone says that it's more lucrative than drugs. At least they don't have uses. That's a good thing. I'm not that sure, but anyway. But it's contradictory information. We are not sure. But you can see that when you're questioning things like that, it's a, a big amount of money. So there are like three main schools, depending on the kind of malware, depending on the targets and uh, technology being used. And they are identified in Brazil, in Russian school, and Chinese. Of course, it is, this is not accurate, but more or less you will have an idea because all of them are different, and there are different ways of doing the same things. The Brazilian one is the lowest at technical level. It's more focused on, on farming. You know, it's just changing the ATC host entries in your computer and redirecting all your bank entries to wherever. And they are more centered on email, harvesting email, because Brazil is one of the top spam countries in the world, so these are easily sold into the Brazilian market, all the email addresses that you can get. The second one is the Russian school. This is the most sophisticated by far. It has the highest technical level. Uh, all the Trojans lead to the creation of few botnets. Very difficult to detect, very difficult to, to clean from the computer. And it's more centered on, on banking data. And finally, the Chinese school is the last one coming to this, to this place, but it's growing up uh, very fast. It's more centered in the part of East Asia, uh, especially in Korea, and it's more centered on video games data. Uh, this can sound strange. Why, is they, why are they stealing video game data, like uh, World of Warcraft or things like that? But you will see later that this is something very profitable. And they are as well diversifying their targets and doing different things into this market like hosting, and they are, you know, if you remember RBN from Russia, uh, Russian Business Networks, it was an ISP where all the hosting in the world, uh, all the, the phishing, the malware was hosted in this, in this ISP. Now it's diversified into different countries, and China is one of them. So they have part of this business as well. So the creation of any of these schemas has three steps in common. The first one is infection. You need to infect as much as possible, but this is not that true now because it depends. If you want to create a huge botnet, it can be very profitable, of course, but you have another options. And many times it's much better to fly below the radar and not making a lot of noise. So this is applicable in infection and in harvesting as well. You can try to steal everything in a company, into a computer, or you can try just to put the Trojan there and it will be fired in case of some, 
a special event happens or something like that. So you can be much more stealthy. And finally, to monetize all the data that you obtain from your schema. This is the, probably the most difficult because money is always leaving tracks and you need to uh, put this money somewhere clean. So money laundry is, being, uh, is becoming very specialized area. And the difficult part is how to infect, how to infect as much computers as possible. Well, according to this study, uh, most users are idiots. <laughs> of course, <laughs> this is a very, gen very general approach. But in some sense, it's true. We should consider that all of you guys are security experts, so you won't be uh, clicking into a spam or you won't be installing something that you don't know what it is or something like that. But you should think like any average user that he's having no clue what UAC is in the computer. They are clicking everything, yes, yes, please install, I don't mind. And this is what is happening. It's not that difficult. Of course, there are many other ways of doing that. Apart from spam and phishing, delivering malware, uh, we have drive-by infections becoming very, very popular. Uh, you will find a lot of uh, sites with vulnerabilities where you can try to inject your malware, your uh, iframe, pointing to any Chinese site where you have uh, an exploit pack, and in case that someone visits there, it's going to be redirected without his knowledge, and it's going to uh, be an exploit, but you, you know that. So you can train a botnet as well, you have like 1,000 computers for you to install wherever you want for a very economical price. Worms, zero days. Uh, this is a very bad thing because we know that we are always late with that. Search engine optimization. Every time that there is a pass in the internet, uh, Michael Jackson died or Obama gets president or whatever, immediately we can see a lot of pages offering something very bad and in the top of the rankings of any search engine like Google. So it's very easy for a lot of people to go to these things and to be infected. This year, in my opinion, has been the year of uh, vulnerabilities in the third party applications, especially Adobe, PDF, and Flash. And we have seen more of infections trying to exploit these vulnerabilities and being very successful. And all these methods drive to the creation of very few huge botnets, uh, a lot of computers involved. This is one of the most present examples we use. Uh, it was pretending to be an actualization of the uh, Outlook Web Access. So it was delivered to medium and small uh, companies. And you can think that it's very lame and no one is going to, to fall into it. I can tell you that security companies that I know, a lot of people got infected with things like that. If this is happening in security companies, what will happen in any other one? So people is always, you know, they have a lot of emails every day. Uh, this one was spoofing the sysadmin uh, address from the company. So it was very easy for someone who is doing a lot of things at the same time just to say, oh, okay, they are just updating the OWA, so I will click and What's this, a binary, okay, I will install. And they're infected, it's that easy. This is the same. We should put ourselves into the average user shoes. You know, a lot of alarms every day in the computer asking permissions for installing things that we have no clue of what they are, they are actualizations. There are another program, I have no idea. So this is a Trojan threat detected. Oh yeah, well, okay, yes, let me work. I'll install it. <laughs> and this is a problem. But even if you are following all the procedures, we have this problem as well. The antivirus industry today was like the silver bullet for protecting our computers. You know, you have an AV on your computer, you are perfectly protected. Today is not the case. The Trojans are fighting in equal conditions with antivirus. As Matt said in uh, yesterday's keynote, 
we're having like 200,000 samples a day. So how to handle with that? In the case of SEUS, we have some statistics showing that the average detection rate is more or less about 60%. It's, it's quite good. But I can tell you that in our average cases of people who is having fraud, we are more on the left side, so the detection is usually between 20% or below. Because this is a historical uh, detection rate uh, stat, but you should consider new fresh samples that are different. This is the detection rate from SUSE Tracker. I'll talk about this page later. And you see it's always above 50%. But from my experience, I'm telling you that new fresh samples usually are 0%, 5%, and usually detected like suspicious by the antivirus. So thank you for these stats to Virus Total. You know this page. You can upload whatever you want, and it will run in all the antivirus engines, 40, 41, I think. So here we can see the evolution of banking-related malware detected by this service. And we can see that clearly it's rising in the last years. This is Trojans with rooted capabilities. This is very bad because if your computer is with a, with a Trojan with its capabilities, it's infected with that, it's very difficult to remove. You can see that there are some peaks here in the, in the stats. You can imagine that behind all these peaks, there is a peak in a campaign uh, trying to infect computers using some of these Trojans with these capabilities. They are always detected uh, after the infection has gone on. Okay, so we have seen how to infect. Now we will see what to do with the data from the computers that we have infected. These are some, some prices from the, from the market. You can see that a Visa MasterCard number is as low as $1. This depends, and these markets are very bad. We will see that later prices are highly mobile. It's very difficult to set a price for a good because it depends very much on the vendor. It depends very much on the quantity that you are buying. Matt? just to have an idea. And here you, we have some figures of video games. Look at the level 80 Epic, Drog, and Priest, Archimon, Horde, able to transfer. I have no idea what this means, but this is valuable to $600. So I think that someone has been playing a lot of time with this character to arrive to this level. And it's pretty expensive. You cannot sell this kind of goods on eBay, for instance, but there are a lot of other forums, a lot of places where you can try to bid for them. So in case that you are stealing the gaming data from someone who has been playing a lot of time to a video game, it can be very profitable. So once you have the money, what to do with it? It's difficult to clean the tracks. So moving the money around between a lot of banks and accounts, it seems to be a lame idea because, of course, we know that it's very easy to follow the track between all of banks and so on. But reality is that it's not that easy. There are a lot, and there are a lot of transfers every day. There are a lot of banks. There are a lot of difficulties depending on the countries, depending on jurisdictions, between on relationships. If you need a, an order, it will take a lot of time, so when you arrive, the money has disappeared and things like that. It's not that easy. And of course, there are a lot of services for transferring money, like Western Union, MoneyGram, but as well, there are a lot of virtual ones, like Eagle, Liberty Reserve. In case that you are not familiarized with these kind of services, there are, I don't know, 100 easily, is, and many of them, are based on countries that they don't have 
any kind of relationship with jurisdictions, for instance, in the European Union or the USA. So it's very difficult to ask for data from someone. Even some of them are claiming that they are not logging any data from anyone. So it's impossible in this case to get this data from the, from the transfers. But of course, you can move the money, why draw it at any country, any foreign country, buy something on eBay, or even buy something that is non-existent, just pay for it, and the other guy gets the money, of course, he's their friend, so the money is legitimate now. Virtual casinos are told to be a good place for doing that. And there are some nasty tricks. For instance, you can try to buy at AdSense and put a lot of advertisement on fake antivirus. This is told to be like 30 to 50% uh, worth. I mean, if you invest in this, for instance, $1 million, you will be earning half this money and it will be clean. So it's not bad considering the different uh, percentages that are being, uh, that, that you need to pay for some money laundering services. So even buying the legitimate things is a good service. And there was a case of two guys who put uh, their songs on iTunes, on the iTunes store, and they bought them for $2 million. So this money was uh, clean when they got it but they were caught. So you see, the new paradigm of malware is that there are no entry barriers now. This is the big difference. Until now, we have closed methods with very specialized people doing the bad things, all very close and very difficult to get into. Now it's like open source. You can have the, 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 the code, the binary for no money. We will see it later. We can have the services, the hosting, we can have the exploit, we can have everything. Yes, if you have a computer, if you look around for a while, and you have, I don't know, $200 is enough for developing your own botnet. So you have as well of all your services available for money laundering, for everything. And this is becoming much more successful than any other closer schemas like Sinowal, Eurozone, or or bank patch. These three Trojans are much more advanced than Sirius. For instance, Sino well was being installed in the MBR of your computer, very difficult to remove from there, very difficult to detect. Eurozone and bank patch, and bank patch uh, they have many in the browser capabilities, so they are doing a transfer to any other account and even showing you the right balance of your account without taking into consideration the transfer that they have already done. So they are much more advanced, but they are not su uh, so successful. Here again, we have various total statistics. The, as you can imagine, the big one is the one related to, to Zeus. Uh, Setbot, in this case, it has many alias. And you see the big, huge difference. There is a red peak orange peak there, this is related to Configur. So you can see, for instance, the big difference, even in the case of Configur, one of the most talk about viruses in last years, one of the most successful with a lot of infection rates. But you see that Zeus is like 10 times more or even more. It's been much more successful. So, I think that now it's time to take a look at, uh, at, the, at the SUSE itself. We will see the binary, we will see how it works. But first of all, a little bit of story. The origins. Well, I don't really know, but it's told that the origins of this Trojan, it was programmed by someone duped the uh, AZ. He's a young guy, imagine, three years ago, in Moscow, working like a program computer, uh, programmer, sorry. And he's bored of driving his shitty car every day to work, of the life he's living, 
So his dream is to change, is to become wealthier, and his dream is to own this car. So he decided to go to the dark side and start programming a, a boat. It was a very simple boat by that time. It was being sold by $3,000, and he was offering uh, support, and there was a disclaimer that it was only for investigation purposes, who he was, so he was responsible for nothing that was doing with it, blah, blah, blah. But it became very popular because the binary constructor was very good. So it was a very good source for wrapping any malware that you want and making it very difficult to detect every time that you use the binary constructor. And there was another key point here, and it was the uh, Sanker CNC. It was another control panel for bots. So it became compatible with this panel. And this is the point when it truly became popular. The, there was a drop in the price, and everybody started using it. By that time, AZ was very busy with other things because he joined a German cyber gang who was sold to steal like $20 million by the end of that year. Through six months, they were infecting a lot of computers and transferring money in small quantities. But I don't really know if he was really in this, in this thing. It's all to be, to be so. Um, things happened by that time. There started a lot of vulnerabilities in the CNC panel. So everybody was fighting each other. Different guns were stealing the data from the other ones, from the servers. They were being owned and things like that. And someone called uh, KG at Obscure.net took the responsibility of making a fresh new approach for the CNC server and solve all the vulnerabilities. But the problem that is that at this point, there were a lot of <coughs> customized versions. It was very difficult to see which one was the original track, who was the original developer. Probably he was not anymore there. And at this point today is that we have a lot of different versions. And we don't really know which one is the legitimate one. We are in the 1.6. I don't know version, but we have seen 1.3 as well. But we are not sure. But we don't think it is the original one. We will see the different versions now. So we have seen the code for sale as well. People who is claiming to be the original developer, but we don't think so. Probably they got the code somehow, and they modified it, they are reselling it, things like that. So it's becoming like open source. Everybody has access to it, and it was being sold for, we don't know the price, but not very, very expensive. However, this guy showed that he has the code. We are not sure if it is the last version, but of course it is a version of Osir. So you see, everybody has access to this code. If you want to pay, you can access. Well, we will see the different features of the different versions that we have today. But before of that, we will see a little bit how it works. It's a very simple Trojan. All it checks if it is running in the, in the system, makes a copy, hidden, change the, the, the creation time and things like that to make it less suspicious. Is creating an entry in the registry for reopening when, when necessary, when uh, with every reboot, and just calling home and download the configuration file. In the configuration file, we will see all the targets and all the tricks that it's doing against these targets. Here you have a schema. It's very simple. The SUS injects itself into SBC host, so with every new thread. It's checking if it is the Internet Explorer, and in case it is, it will try to do his bad things, his tricks. It's opening two ports. Uh, the ports are used for getting orders from the CNC server, and it's creating, creating three files, uh, configuration file itself that is stored in your computer, and the stored data, uh, the stolen data, who is being sent to the CNC server regularly, and the screenshots that is taken from your computer. So the servers 
it, there's one central server, the CNC, where all the data is sent, where all the orders are given, but there can be many others for having a backup of the binary or for having a backup of the different configuration files. So let's take a look to the tricks that this binary is doing. The first one, the most popular, is the HTML injection. Now we have seen a variant using Ajax. It's much more nicer. We will see on a screenshot now. But basically, it's injecting HTML into the legitimate HTML that you're retrieving from your bank account, from your bank application, like asking you for more credentials, something like that, things like that. There is an example. This one is a Spanish bank, and this is an Ajax injection. It's of course, if you don't see the video, it's <laughs> difficult to imagine, but it's much more smooth. It appears when you enter your credentials and it's asking you for all the, all the positions of your card that you need for making any transfer. In case that you put all of them and click continue, it will ask you for more, and that's it. But the difference is that, for instance, if we, if we see another one, this is much worse because this one is very different is changing the appearance of the, of the application. If you see an Ajax thing appearing, it's much more smooth, it's more likely that you will enter the, the credentials. However, this case is different. This is a redirection. Instead of being accessing to your web account and your bank account and putting your credentials, this one is hosted in another, in another server and it's just a mirror of your original uh, bank, and in this case, it's asking you for different things. Again, for the coordinates of your card. More things, it has a file search capability, so it usually looks for patterns into your hard disk, like password, bank, things like that. You see, probably none of you have this on the computer, but a lot of people have a TXT or a document with all the passwords stored there. So you can find many, many things making this kind of searches. <coughs> Finally, for defeating OTPs, there are a good solution as well. All the CNC servers have a, all CNC servers have a Jabber plugin. So in case that you, for instance, are being asked for an OTP for making a transaction, it will distract you with a special plugin like a progress bar or asking you your whatever. And meanwhile, the OTP is being sent through the Jabber plugin to someone who is making the transfer and then is returning the control to your computer. All of this doing through your computer using it like a proxy. Screenshots, of course, for defeating virtual keyboards, it has a screenshot capability. It's taking a screenshots of all the keys that you are pushing for your credentials. And in new versions, we have seen some new features. It has been solving the CNC vulnerabilities. Not really, we will see that later. It's using RC4 encryption. The keys is stored in the binary, so the configuration file cannot be open if you don't have this key. It has the file search capability and the reverse connection. The Java plugin, as I told you, it's intercepting the NSPR4, so next target is going to be Firefox and Mozilla uh, browsers. And in the first, we have seen that it's using a random file name for a within detection. The binary is not being hidden, and this is a good thing because you usually look for this kind of things in a computer that is infected, and you miss the obvious one, like the not hidden ones. So it could be a good thing to avoid detection. It's implementing some anti-debugging techniques, but the big new is the configuration only in memory. It's not leaving any track in your hard disk, but as we, don't, we see that, it's not such a good thing because you only have one shot. If you are infected, you communicate with your CNC server, you retrieve your configuration file, it's, it's, it's in memory as long as you reboot. But the CNC server is not likely to be open forever. So in case that it is closed, uh, you, sh you miss the, the opportunity to get your, the configuration file. So it's strange. 
is more stealthy, but it's shortening the 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 life the lifetime of the lifespan the lifespan of a, of the Trojan in the computer. CNC vulnerabilities. There are still vulnerabilities, all of them for lack of sanita sanitation of the parameters, and you can inject code and try to get a shell. They are solving some of them. This is a very old one in this parameter, but today there are still vulnerabilities. So this is making different groups hacking each other for getting the data into the, into the different servers. If you go to a server and you, and you can check the contents, you will see a lot of shells there. Most of them are being solved, but still today there are problems that allow you. Next versions to do, compatibility with Windows Vista and with uh, Windows 7. This is only a market thing. They probably can do that, but more of, of, of computers, of target computers are Windows XP, so they don't have the need for doing that. Uh, improve IP hooking, random generation of configuration files, we have seen that. Console-based builder, 64 bits processors support, IP version 6 support, and detailed statistics of what they found in the computer. A lot of work for them. So let's take a look to the different servers that this screenshot was taken today. So these are the listed configuration servers today in the world, as we know. You can see most of them are in Europe and the United States. Here we have some statistics. The top four are always the Holland, China, Russia, and the United States. This is the same that we have seen in our own statistics. Top three, again, United States, China, and, and, and Russia. And we have seen an average of 10 hosts open per day. But you can see that some of them are really open for a long time. This statistic is, is, is fresh. I took it today, so you can see that there are some servers open since the beginning of this year. So many times it's very difficult because the ISP is not responding. These are valid proof hosting, and it's very difficult for us to try to close them. Statistics about affected entities, usually banks. It depends on the different configuration files, on the your geolocalization, and things like that. We are biased to Spanish uh, banks, but we have seen this the same around the world. Probably all entities are listed. So let's take a look to the configuration file so you can have an idea of how it is. You have an entry for updating the binary with a fresh one, new changes, more undetectable for the CNC server, advanced configuration in case you need a new one, targeting new uh, banks or whatever. Web filters, we don't want here to, to register anything related to porno and sex, but we want Societation URL and K-Trade Bank. Web fakes. In case that you enter Deutsche Bank, you are being redirected to neuromancian.org, so you will find a mirror there where you will enter your credentials and will be stolen. Um, injection, this is the one I showed you. In this case, is uh, in injecting into the form an input asking you for the, the PIN. The control server looks like that. It's very, very simple. It has statistics from countries, from operating systems, what's online. It's just PHP with MySQL, configurable, customizable. Uh, there are different options, changing the name of the tables, things like that, the username. Uh, you can see the logs. The, you can send orders to the different bots, things like that. It's very simple, just to store the data. And this is a very nice feature that I want to tell you, the Kill OS. In case that you are in a hurry, you don't want to be in track, you are done with a computer, Kill OS. 
it will delete two branches from the registry. You can see them here listed. It will zero all memory. This will result in a blue screen of death. And probably you will reinstall your computer, so all tracks are being cleared. And this new is from this year when 100,000 computers got this nasty order. I don't know why, but it was very bad. New models of service. This is the market. Look, this guy is offering hosting for three months, $50 a month, with 10 Internet Explorer exploits, two Firefox exploits, one Opera exploit, and mirrors for banking different banks. This is another service. You can see that all the different banks are changing the image, are changing the, the, the aspect. So, for instance, you can offer a service updating the mirrors so you always have the fresh new version. This guy sending the, the, the builder for 250. But this kind of markets are not very reliable. For instance, this guy is asking for assistance. I've been using Zeus. I have a botnet of 100,000 bots, but someone owns it. So what can I do? Can you offer me any assistance? What is the warranty? This is happening all the time. Also, you can see here, hey, here you have the version and a really good guy. Take it. Oh, it's backdoor. Oh, well, you know, I'm sorry for that. Oh, this one is as well backdoor, Trojan it. You know, no one is delivering things for free. So if you want to buy things, you should be careful as well. To finish, we have some messages into the binaries as well. They are nice guys. So the researchers uh, taking some of their, uh, some of their time. Um, for instance, hello stupid developers of Avid Antivirus. We saw this into a binary. Here you can see the strings to the right. You can use this as a signature for this payee. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is nice. So to finish, sorry for being in a hurry, but that's it. Uh, some conclusions from all of this is that the model has changed. Now we have a huge market, a lot of dedicated services, all of them very specialized. There are no entry barriers. Everything is open source. So you can join a very close mafia or you can join the free people and you can try to steal money and make carding on your own house and hope not to be prosecuted. But it's a difficult model because this is becoming very popular and we will face a lot of problems with this in the future. So in my opinion, Zeus being as simple as it is, it has a long life left because the problem is that probably we are failing in how to attack this, this kind of model, no? So all computers can be infected, a lot of young people doing this just for fun, they don't have the sense of inco, they don't have the sense of doing anything bad. So it's a problem and we should try to find out solutions altogether. If someone has any of them, please tell me. So that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be delighted to try to help you. Is the auto update of Soyuz uh, protected with some public key copy cryptography like config, or is this any executable, executable from this URL is downloaded and executed? executed? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Configure uses some various nifty public key crypt, crypt system to validate updates. Is Soyuz using something similar? Yeah, they use the. Well, you cannot enter the. The communication between the CNC server and the binary, if you don't have the right key. So this is the RCO, the RC4 key that they are using for a given network, a given botnet. 
And in case that you don't have it, you cannot enter into the communication. But it is easy to accomplish if you have the binary, because it's easy to extract. If you do the reverse engineering, you can get it. Any other question? OK, I will be around here if you want to ask me any other thing, or you can mail me. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>